While you're turning there, Rob Lloyd and Sandy, I want you to go ahead and bring the communion stuff and have it ready. Even though we won't do it till after, but I want you to do it now, okay, if you would. And also to be, uh, have a glove for a little bit later as you guys will pass out the little wafers, okay? Amen. You guys, uh, I have a lot to say. I have been ministering for a long time now. And somehow it all fits together. I look forward to next week when I will give you the opportunity to talk about some of your personal uh, victories and also acknowledge some difficult times. That's an appropriate thing to do. I like doing that on this, you know, right around this time of year. But today, you guys, I want you to listen, okay? And uh, if you're a member of Christ Church at the Grove, I want you to really tune it up, okay? Exodus 13, uh, and let me start at verse 17, and I'm going to skip around. I'm not going to read all the verses of the story, nor am I going to complete the story. But starting at chapter 13, verse 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on to the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. I hope that most of you are thinking Moses, children of Israel, leaving Egypt, the famous Exodus story. That God knew of a shorter way. And if you ever look at a map of how the children of Israel traveled when they were released from Egypt, you'll say, why didn't they just go from, you know, the short route? Here's the explanation. It wasn't because God didn't know the short route. <laughs> For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. And the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Um, uh, let me skip over now to uh, chapter 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, most of you know the story, how Pharaoh changes his mind. The Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And the Israelites were terrified. They cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? <laughs> Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you'll see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will, you'll never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need uh, to be still. Verse 21 tells us that then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. And the waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Amen. How many of you have seen a movie or two that portrays this? <laughs> Okay, uh, the famous, uh, you know, um, um, uh, film, uh, The Ten Commandments, you know, b back in the day when they didn't have all the computerization, amen, they struggled a little bit to create this scene. But if you watch that old time movie, you'll, you'll see a wall of water or jello, that's what they used. A lot, a lot of jello <laughs> on the left and on the right. You guys, this is the Exodus story, the exit story for the uh, uh, 
children of Israel out of Egypt. It is a, a very important story to them, um, a major story to them, but it is just one of many in Jewish history. Oh, there's a lot of exit stories. The, the Bible's full of them. Their history is full of because they keep finding themselves in between the rock and the hard place. How many of you in your personal lives can relate? In other words, don't you wish that that last big trial that you are just now coming through <laughs> would, would, would be your last, kind of? But no, on the other side of that crossing, uh, even for the children of Israel, there was, oh, a lot more to be experienced that would bring them once again to a place where they really, really, really needed God. Amen. We have Stephen and Darlene here, and last time they were here, they were just on the beginning fringe of your new Florida experience, right? And you guys had certain things that you were facing that some of us, uh, you know, been praying for you and, and, and you know, trying to help. And, um, but you guys have settled that. Your problem is now what you're facing now. <laughs> or you will be facing. And that's the way all of our lives are. That's the way the history of the children of Israel. But uh, we love and we need to, and we even sang about it this morning. Uh, the, the, re the recollecting of God's mighty work in splitting the Red Sea. That story so vividly speaks of a, a rock and hard place situation where there is no way. The children of Israel saw no way. All they could do was turn on Moses and say, man, we told you. <laughs> That always helps to have somebody who says, didn't I tell you so? Folks, that's not what Moses needed, per se. What he needed was a way out. He needed a passageway. He could see the scenario. And all of the sun, through the course of the night, a mighty wind starts blowing. God miraculously holds back the Egyptians from proceeding just long enough to give the wind a chance to do some phenomenon with the Red Sea. Which all of a sudden, you know, we got a pretty tall wall there, a pretty tall wall over here. But that's something like that happened. Where the Red Sea now has a passageway. Where there was no passageway. Amen. If you will, a door appeared. Now what to do? Because that door would have looked, that passageway would have looked a little bit shaky. Not only that, someone could have asked, but Moses, uh, I believe... That leads to the desert. What are we going to do once we get over there? Couldn't, right? Wouldn't someone, have, Moses, are you sure these walls are going to hold? They're holding now. Well, well Moses, but what are we going to do when we get to the other side? Hmm. Maybe we'll figure it out when we get there. Maybe the God who has provided this way will provide another way once we get over there. You guys, get used to this idea for this coming year. Because the numbering of the year just lends itself to the idea of, uh, and I'm entitling this, 2020 vision. And already you've heard people begin to talk that way. And different, maybe in your workplace, in the political arena, in, uh, you know, uh, wherever. 
Maybe in your own family you're starting to think, man, this is a significant year, 2020. Amen. As I was um, thinking about and dedicating uh, Sophia, amen, I pray she has 2020 vision. Amen. Now, I don't have 2020 vision. I, as a young fellow, I have glasses. Uh, and I don't like them too much, but at least they correct my vision to 2020. I'm thankful for them. Contacts now. But it's important, you guys, to be able to see. How many of you have heard that God works his wonders? Uh, it, it, uh, God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. How many of you have heard some little saying like that? Okay. I've looked it up. I've t- look, not, not in the Bible. I'm not sure where it comes from. Probably some famous poem or something. I, I, it's, the idea is in the Bible. There's no doubt that God at times works in mysterious ways. How many of you have experienced that? Well, you know, wow, that was, that was something. Okay, folks, let me uh, encourage you in 2020 to help with your vision uh, in whatever arena of life you may be applying this. Um, God also works in the obvious. Amen. God also works in the obvious. It doesn't always have to be mysterious. It doesn't always have to throw you for a loop. It doesn't always have to, I, uh, not, no, dots don't connect. Is it possible that God is in the obvious? Folks, the longer I live, the more I look back over my life and thank God for those many, many, many times that he just, Ben, door. <laughs> Rock and hard place, no door, you're very confused. Rock and hard place, door, hmm, <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> Amen, I love the story of the, of the man supposedly who was, uh, ended up stranded on an island, and for years he was stranded on the island all by himself, and he was praying and praying and praying, and finally had a vision, a dream, and God said, um, he saw the mighty hand of God plucking him to safety, taking, you know, him off the island. And, and he got so excited because, you know, you know, God's miraculous is going to just pluck me, take me. The next day, a, a, a ship came by. And uh, uh, they saw him and they said, come on board. He said, no, I'm waiting for God. I, saw, I had a vision. God's going to take me off this island. Mm-hmm. Boat kept going. Next day, airplane, helicopter. Hey, sir, we see you. We're going to see you. Uh, no, no. 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 God. Hand. Ah. The third day, he died. <laughs> Up in heaven, he says, God, <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to save me off that island. And God said, well, I sent a boat and I sent a helicopter and you didn't want to come. So I just brought you on home. folks the God of the mysterious can be the God also in the obvious amen our problem sometimes is that we want to uh, 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 know it all or at least we think we do folks most of us uh, need to thank God that he doesn't show us all our lives it met, paralyzed some of us tremendously. Uh, folks, I like the analogy that talks about a car. You know, when you're on a trip you, you, and it starts getting dark, you turn on your headlights. Those headlights shine, but so far. But they will keep you moving. I'm thankful for headlights. You know, turn, dark, if it gets dark enough, you turn the things on, you'll have to stop. But the headlights will take, but the headlights don't usually shine all the way to your destination. And in life, that's kind of what we want God to do. When what we need to do is be thankful for the headlights that keep us moving. Isaiah 30, verse 19 and 20, uh, this was a dark period in the children of Israel's lives um, uh, under um, Assyrian attack. And 
And God begins to teach, talk to them about um, restoration and deliverance. And one of the things he says, oh, people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you'll weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. And al although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. So that's their, that was their current state. He says, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you'll see them. And whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will heal, hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Folks, uh, this idea of teachers is, is comparable to what we would call leaders. That God has always um, uh, uh, used leaders. Amen. Have you ever noticed in the Bible story that it's always through leader types? That God is moving and providing. And so, you know, Moses said, I know that it looks scary, but we were in a real hard way. I see a passageway. Let's walk in it. <laughs> this is the way. Walk in it. Folks, leaders lead. Followers don't struggle with it. <laughs> it's how God works. Uh, if you're part of our leaders group, I need you to come stand here very quickly. And you'll be going back to your seats very quickly. I just want to make sure you know you're a leader, <laughs> which you do, because you attend a monthly meeting. Right? Some of you may not, but look on the website. We're not hiding them. These are leaders of various ministries of our congregation. I am the leader of leaders. Am I not, team? Amen. Yeah, I tend to be very prominent. <laughs> but we are the leaders group. And we have acknowledged it in our bylaws and in our uh, uh, guidelines. And um, folks, I hope you recognize these folks as, as leaders for Christ Church at the Grove. And I, I want you to give them a hand of appreciation. <laughs> now, I am thankful for our group that is wise enough to understand that leaders who have no followers are simply people taking a walk. That unless we are bringing others called followers along with us, we're kidding ourselves. We're just taking a walk if nobody's following. We appreciate your attitude. We appreciate your cooperation, you guys. Uh, I hope that you appreciate that we uh, don't deem ourselves more important. We acknowledge that God has called us to a different function within our body. And it's not because we're the smartest Knives in the drawer because we're not. But we are the appointed leaders at this point in time. And we are interested in hearing from God. This is the way. And then turning to you and say, hey, let's walk in it. Okay? So you guys, with that, I want to uh, uh, announce that the leaders group unanimously, because we're not always unanimous, but this was unanimous, um, have reached an important decision. And we want to begin to help bring you along. Thank you, you guys. You may be seated. <laughs> yes. You guys, Mark and Barb just happened, and they were very, uh, they're, uh, they're with their family, Mark and Barb. Uh, but you guys, we have been praying for and and trying to sense God's will for our congregation. And find, I find it, I'm going to call it coincidental, God-incidental, however you want to phrase it. 
that it happens to be at the beginning of this year is coming to of 2020. Because for a period of time, some of us have been pray, praying, God help us with our vision. Um, there has appeared to us miraculously what we are seeing as an open door. Uh, and it has to do with the availability of a church building that's just two miles down the road. Uh, familiar to, I hope, most of you, you know, if you travel 896 and uh, um, you hit the bend where Appleton Road goes straight, but, you know, 896 turns hard to the left, that there's an old Avon Grove Elementary School on your right-hand side. Right across the street, you guys, would be Kimballsville United Methodist Church. And it is no secret, and some of you have even asked us if we're, you know, for, for a while now, it's been on the market. Okay, and um, <clears throat> if you've asked me, I would have told you, oh, yeah, we're aware and we're interested. Of course, I've, told, I've told you for years now, nothing's off the table. Nothing's on the table sometimes, but nothing's off the table either. And um, at the beginning of last year, uh, the folks that we rent from um, did it remind us that we were renters. Not for any mean purposes. They were very sheepish about it. But uh, they have, ha you know, S uh, Christian Life Center has a new pastor. He's a younger man. Um, they've got some visions about some things. And they felt a need to at least remind us. Not that they were asking us to leave. Um, with that, last year we told you that we were aware of a church, Media Mennonite. And that we were going to explore that possibility. Unbeknownst to myself, God was preparing us. Because at the same time, God, uh, the leaders group thought it wise to, well, you know, maybe, maybe we ought to take a harder look again at that property that we own, 28 acres we own. Um, uh, it's a cornfield, it grows beautiful corn. And uh, <laughs> again, the idea of maybe building on it. Okay. And between those two experiences and that media Mennonite church being much too small um, and um, access problems and a beautiful and has been a blessing. I'm not speaking ill of, the, of that building or there was good, those good folks were wonderful to us. Um, but God was prepping us. We, because of that experience said, oh, we need this, this, and this, or, or, you know, for the size of our group. And that media men I just does to supply. So we looked at our land, and that as an option, and uh, we learned through that process about some of our limitations monetarily. Like two to three million dollars just isn't going to work for us right now. <laughs> And right after camp, uh, I heard, uh, because uh, a local pastor said it to me, reached out to me during the week of camp, actually. I didn't even know what he was calling about. But as soon as I got back home, um, I called him. And that was the Sunday, Paula, after, th after that, that you spoke to me. To say, but Ben, did you guys, were you aware that there is this possibility just two miles down the road. And I said, no, but I'm willing to go look. <laughs> okay. You guys, that's how God was moving things. And it's funny, isn't it, how God needs to do prep work sometimes? <laughs> right? To, sometimes holy discontent even. Somebody wrote a book. That's what it was called. Holy discontent is what God has to sometimes do to get some of us to move. Okay, you guys. So the bottom line, and in, 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 uh, um, we are looking to have reached a, a point where in discussions with them, we have an, an agreed upon price. Their congregation has to vote on it. 
they do that next week. So everything I'm telling you, if their congregation votes no-go, then it's no-go. Okay. Um, it would be that property sold to us. We would be the, the owners. It would, they are asking to be allowed to you share the building with us. Amen. They, they are a small congregation. They're an older congregation. They, uh, they've been around for many years. They want to see if maybe th this could propel them into a new future for themselves. But they cannot afford it anymore, the building. So it would be God taking us after 12 years of being the renter and now making us the owner and saying, oh, by the way, how are you going to treat the renters? <laughs> That's the way I look at it. I've appreciated every good and kind act that our church group has been able to receive. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we might be able to control the heat and the cooling a little better. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All righty. Because let's. Because number one, some of you are cold blooded and some of you are warm blooded. Number two, some of you in your own house can't control it. You got one room that's hot and you got another one that's kind of cold. All right, so these are big bills. It's just part of the phenomenon, you guys. Okay? Um, uh, but we will, in some partnership with them, we, uh, you guys, this is the biggie, that this would assure our future beyond most of our lifetimes. In other words, I've been the pastor, you know, for near 13 years. Um, and uh, but this move would say Christ Church at the Grove continues. Amen. 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 That, you know, beyond me, beyond some of you, I don't know. I don't know everything on the other side of the wilderness. I don't need to. At times, I don't need to. And I'm a wise man sometimes. Look, an open door. <laughs> but I, that, that thrills me for our younger families. Uh, we will continue to hold on to the land track. The, the land track right now isn't involved in the negotiations and the pricing. It would require us to get a, a loan from the bank. Uh, we have some savings. Um, uh, we would have to approach the bank about a, a $500,000 loan. Oh, good. Nobody gasped. <laughs> Nobody gasped. Because, folks, there's people around here locally buying homes <laughs> at that price. I will say, looking forward, that I, uh, uh, we're going to have to up our faithfulness and our sacrifice to receive this blessing of God. I, I think we're up to it, you guys. I really do. I, I, amen. There's been uh, things that I've been watching and observing that lets me know, dear God, for such a time as this, Okay, so with that, let me say that I know you have a lot of questions, and uh, so do I, but at this point, we can at least have open discussions about it. The leaders have been phenomenal about not talking a lot because I've not heard anyone come to me over this past eight months that we've been going through all this stuff. Uh, but I'm willing now to talk, so any questions? Uh, I can tell you now that not all the leaders group is as informed of the details that uh, myself, Andrew, Moise, Sell, Justin, and Mark Underwood, we're the most informed. You might do best to approach us. We're, we're open to it. On January the 8th, the Wednesday when family promises here, 
that we're not having our Wednesday night service. I'm asking if they could have an open house. A one hour period where any of you, and we'll be there, the leaders will be there, to give tours. Quick tours. That don't answer all of your questions, but at least if you would like to see it, because you've never been in there before, um, that's hopefully they're, they're going to be able to, they, he, he, the pastor there said, well, Ben, I have to wait for the vote. And he's right. Okay, before he can guarantee that we can come over on that Wednesday. We will have on the 12th, which is a Sunday, after our service, a question and answer period. Okay. And then on the 19th at our business meeting, we will have a vote of members. Let me clarify. Real, where. We're not asking you yay or nay about all the details of this. What you would be voting on is that yes... You believe your, hear, your, your leaders are hearing from God. It's not going to be a debate all among us. We've done all the debating. <laughs> We've considered a lot of things for eight months. You're welcome to point some things out to us, but the vote will simply be, do you believe your leaders are leading you in God's way. And uh, we're big people. Uh, we know that not everyone has to see it or hear it from God like we do. But collectively, this is what we hear and see. This is the way. Let's walk in it. Okay? So, folks, I, um, boy, that's a lot. It's, how many of you had no idea that this was in the works? You had no idea. Okay, you folks are not in the grapevine. <laughs> I don't know why. I wasn't when I worked for the county. Don't worry about it. It's good not to be in the grapevine. Amen. This is the appropriate time and whatnot. It's a major move. Um, again, feel free to talk to us. You guys, I'm going to ask... Uh, let me see, the Lloyds to get the stuff real quick. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, it is here, right, good. Justin, if you'll help man over there.